Well, hello there again, my friends. It is Wes Spencer. I hope you are doing great. Welcome to my channel. I don't know if you know this, but it's October. And with October comes some new updates to the Pi ecosystem, and yours truly will be covering that in today's video. What are we going to get into? We're going to get into a couple of different things. We're going to talk about what I am going to call a did you know session. There's some things about Pi that you probably don't know or haven't thought of, and I'm just going to walk you through some of that and why it's important. We're also going to be talking about the Pi convention that is just now kicking off, what my thoughts are around it. And there's some interesting things in this video that hold true for all of us that I want to make sure we cover because there's some behind the scenes things that are happening inside and under the covers of this convention that are actually more important than the convention itself. What do I mean by that? Well, you got to stay tuned because we're going to cover that. So we're going to dive into all of this and so much more coming right up. Okay, as we get started, welcome to my channel. My name is Wes Spencer, and if we have never met and this is the first time you have found yourself in this channel, welcome to the world of innovative technology. Now, I cover all kinds of things in this channel, really whatever I want. By trade, I'm a cybersecurity guy, I'm a startup executive, and I am a technologist and cybersecurity nerd through and through. Now, my media people always tell me, Wes, you're breaking the rules on this channel. Only cover one topic, only cover one thing. Well, I'm not going to do that. So sometimes you'll see me cover cybersecurity and some of the news around it. You'll see me cover some tech startup related things. And you'll also see me cover a lot of cryptocurrency. I've been in the world of crypto since 2013. I've got some awesome videos that I've continued to queue up all around how this whole thing got started, why it's important important, why I think it's growing, even some in the world of cybercrime and the world of Silk Road and how all of that stuff kind of was a kickoff and impetus into driving a marketplace economy in the world of cryptocurrency. So I love all of these things. I love to cover all of these things. I think they're a lot of fun and I really appreciate you joining me in this journey. And by the way, quickly, will you just hit the subscribe button? Got new content coming out all the time. Best way to stay in touch with me is to hit the subscribe button. I reply to every Every single commenter, whether they are awesome or their comments make no sense. So let's get involved in this together. OK, so let's talk about Pi just a little bit. There's some awesome things that are happening. As you probably know, there is the new Pi convention that just got kicked off. That's a great thing. We're going to talk about why that's important. But before we do that, I want to talk about a few things that you probably are not aware of in the Pi app and some things that are happening right now that I do think are important for all of us to cover because it's it's important for you. It's important for me and just some lessons learned that I've seen. Now, why are you here and why is everybody else watching this video? Here's why. Because I'm one of the few sources that is pretty unbiased. If Pi takes off and does really, really good, I am very excited for them. But way back in my first video, I expressed some doubts and concerns and issues inside the Pi ecosystem. And I said something that many of you in the comments have really come back to. And I think it resonated with you, which is this. All good, innovative technology probably has some red flags in it, probably has some issues that make you scratch your head and say, I'm not sure about this, but that's what pushes innovation and Pi is doing that. So there are some things I don't like. I am still not a complete believer in the Pi ecosystem. I can't wait for the day in the video where I get to say, hey, you've got Wes's blessing on this green check mark. This thing has got uh, potential and it's going to rise into popularity like Ethereum or Bitcoin or some of the others that I cover. But that's OK. And I am totally fine with being patient and waiting and just see what comes out of all of this. So without all that being said, let's go ahead and talk about some things inside of Pi that I think are important. So you're going to walk through all of this with me. I've got this up. We're going to just kind of jump into all of this together. Uh, so as I open the Pi app, probably for the first time you notice this play button that's sitting here. What is that guy? Well, this is the delivery mechanism for the Pi convention itself. And let me just say this for a minute. I, I think that's pretty brilliant. The more that you can do inside your ecosystem, the better off you are. I have worked and consulted with some startups and some organizations that are all about creating content. And one of the big content theory things that's important in creating a community is this. 
Keep your users inside the community as much as you possibly can. The more you do that, the more potential you have to grow your community base and keep them in the main ecosystem that brings them together. And so I, I love that they are doing this, that they're keeping it here rather than some YouTube stream that you got to click on and go right into YouTube as much as I am a YouTube producer. Uh, I do think it's important that they're doing that. So we're going to cover that in just a minute. But there's there's a few things around all of this that I do want to cover. The chat has a long way to go in its ecosystem, and that's OK. I think they'll get there. It's it, it, when you're developing software, there's only so many things you can tackle at once. But there's some did you knows around the chat that you may not be aware of. And one of them is, do you notice this little plus button at the very bottom right of the screen? If you click that guy, it's going to actually bring up the ability for you to bring in new channels inside of chat. And so there's a lot of uh, things that exist here. There's a couple that I've added that I just wanted to show you. And I'm actually going to subtract one so I can kind of show you how this all works. But you can see, first of all, from the Pioneer perspective, one huge kudos to the Pi team. They've really thought broadly. They've thought internationally. You can see a lot of the different languages that exist here because, as we know, Pi is a very international cryptocurrency, which I think is a really good thing. I even see this in the comments that I get. I get a lot of people that comment in from a different country. And by the way, I'm going to pitch that right now. If you are a Pi user and you are not in the US, leave a comment down below and tell me where you're from. I absolutely want to know where my users are coming from. YouTube gives me some of that information, but not completely. And it's not always right. So I'd love to know where you're from. I'd love to know where you're hailing from. Let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate your country and where you're from. So you can see this. So, you know, for example, if you're Romanian and you want to add into the Romanian pioneers chat, I think that's awesome. Go and do that. So you can see all of these that exist here, but you can also see a random and off topic in French. But then at the very top, you can see some other things like the developers channel. But when you add those, they will then come up here in your chat. So obviously, we'd like to see new and more things happen in the chat. I'd like to see a lot more ability in the chat, better search features, the ability for users to create their own chat channels, a moderation inside of all of those, definitely some of the Reddit style community voting. There is a little bit of that with the up and down votes, but sorting based on all those kinds of things. But by and large, this is good stuff. I love the chat here. So I just wanted to pitch that, throw that out there to you in case you're not aware that you can actually enhance chat. I'd love to see that continue to grow. OK, a couple other things. When you hit the hamburger, that's what we call in the software world, those three little lines that are up there for your settings. A couple other things. I mentioned this in another video below, but I've got my ads turned off. I'm going to leave it that way. And here's why I'm going to leave it that way. I get really frustrated with the way that the Pi team delivers ads. If the ads were just like a notification up top, kind of like how the Brave browser does, like I covered in my bat tutorial, that's one thing. It doesn't bother me. I'm happy to have those delivered to me. But the Apple style ads that they choose are full screen, 30 second overlays with some ridiculous game that I am never going to play. It's not related to me. And I guess it's good that it's not related to me. I'd rather the less targeting towards me, the better. <laughs> but it's the overlay is really aggravating. The last thing I do when I open the app is be forced to wait 30 seconds. So, hey, Pi team, if you want to better monetize your content right now while you're still building the ecosystem, I get that. I get that the ads support you. I'm fine with having ads open, but let's do it in a less intrusive way. Just some of my advice to you, because I think that's a better way to go about. So I've got my ads turned off. If it bothers you, you should turn them off as well because it just makes it very difficult to navigate in the settings. So when you click on your profile, the other thing that you're going to notice, let's talk about the KYC stuff. In the September update, I covered KYC. I covered how KYC works. I actually did a very quick research and introduction into their choice for KYC, which is Yodi and the Yodi app. I'm a big fan of how Yodi works. I like how the whole KYC or know your process, know your customer process works. It's good stuff. Here's what I want to say about this. Many of you are getting a KYC invite inside Yodi, and I've got some words of advice for you from yours truly. Many of you know that I run some companies, so I stay very busy in my day to day. I actually was invited into the KYC process. I saw it early one morning. And I was like, oh, this is great. But I hit all my meetings. By the time I got to the app, I had a video ready. I was going to do a KYC overview process with you. And guess what happened? Their 24 hour window of selection was already over. So because I only check and get into Pi a couple of times a day, one of the things that happened for me, unfortunately, was the fact 
that I missed my window. I opened it. I saw it. I had it ready. I was like, oh, this is great. But then the 24 hour window passed. So again, another comment for the Pi team and a warning for you as users. If you get the KYC invitation and you want to jump into it and it's important for you, do it as soon as possible when you see that invite come in. I'm not saying necessarily drop everything, but almost drop everything because there's no notification of when your timer was set for that 24 hour period and there's no way of knowing when it's going to end. So Pi team, one thing you could do to help us as the community, when the user accepts or opens the app for the first time, that's when the counter should start, not when you choose to give it to me. And I know I'm sure the algorithm chooses based on a lot of metrics that they've talked about on your usage and how many users you have in your security circle. And if you're if you got a, a Pi node running, all that kind of stuff, that's fine. Leave that in place. Just make the timer start when the user opens the app. So again, word of warning, if you're a user, if you get accepted, jump into that right away because you may lose your opportunity like yours truly. Now, if you lost your opportunity or you simply haven't gotten an opportunity for KYC, don't panic, don't worry. We are a long way away from broad user adoption where the KYC process is important. Now, if you're like, what is KYC? Is that Kentucky Fried Chicken? Is that like some other kind of thing? <laughs> I have no idea what it is. Go watch my September video. I'll talk a little bit about the KYC process, why the Pi team has to solve this cha challenge of user identity. That's an important piece of the ecosystem based on how all this system of trust works. So if you get KYC and you wanna do it, do it right away. Okay. So we've covered a couple of the big things that I wanted to cover inside the app. So the Pi convention itself is kicking off. It's October 15th to the 29th. I think they're wisely splitting this across multiple days. I get involved myself in a lot of virtual conferences and I can tell you when you jam pack everything together into like one unified session, yikes, that's really difficult to do into one day. And so it's less information overload. You can watch the sessions you care about. So for example, if you're not a developer and you don't care about that, no worries. You don't have to watch that. If you are uh, somebody that really cares about the node, for example, they talk about the node right now in today's videos. So that's a good thing. You can you can jump right into the things that you care about. So I'm a big fan of how they're delivering the content. I love that it's in app, but let's talk about something that's even more important. The fact that Nikolai himself is leading the keynotes is really important. One of the things I promised I would talk about at the beginning of the video is something happening under the covers of the Pi ecosystem that we've not really seen until recently. And I was really hoping at the convention that at least one, if not all three of the founders would get heavily involved. And here's what it is. In the world of a startup, in the world of creating a company, even like Pi, even though it's cryptocurrency based, the founders drive the narrative. And if the founders don't drive the narrative, then here's what happens. You lose control of the narrative and other people will take over the vision of where the company is going or not going. That is a very, very dangerous thing. I have seen that all founders, especially of successful companies, must be visionaries, must lead from the front. Even if you don't have natural charisma and natural like leadership skills, you've got to manufacture that. One of the greatest shortcomings of the Pi team that's led to a lot of people questioning its authenticity, questioning how legitimate it is. When you lead with the, hey, we've we've been created by three Stanford founders and mathematicians and all this awesome stuff. And then you really don't see them ever again. They're not present on their YouTube channels, not present in Twitter, really. I do think you see them some in the chats, but there's no video proof. There's no, no none of them leading from the front. That's a problem. That leads to doubt. That leads to people thinking, who is driving this company? When scam and fraud things come in, which is rampant in the world of Pi, not just Pi, it's rampant in the world of Bitcoin. Shoot, it's, it's rampant in the world of US dollar as well. Scams are everywhere. But again, that erodes the value and erodes the user's mindset of what Pi is all about. And so I was very curious, who's going to lead this? Is it somebody I've never heard of before? Is it somebody that's been very active? Is it just somebody that claims to be a developer? Nikolai himself led it. So good on you for doing that. That is awesome. I am really glad to see him leading in the vision at the front. Now, should you watch today's video? I think you ought to, and here's why I think you should. They cover some of the vision of where they think Pi is going. It's not real uh, highly produced, and that's okay. I mean, it looks like it's just an iPhone video that he just recorded himself. That's fine, no big deal. Uh, but I do think it's good to see 
him lead from the front, where he wants the company to go. And a lot of it is not like novel and innovative and things we've never seen before. One of the things he talked about is the potential of the node to do some new things in the future, like distribution of bandwidth and file storage and compute resourcing and power and being able to leverage the node that we serve to allow for some of those things. And he kind of talked about how AWS eats up thousands of dollars for them a month. Trust me, I know that try six figures a month with some of the companies that I run. I kid you not, AWS is expensive. So I, I love some of their ideas of saying, hey, the Pi nodes could be used to do even more distributed things. That's awesome. That's not novel. There's been a lot of like Ethereum tokens that have been doing that for a really long time. Like you look at Gollum, for example, and some of the others that have had this idea. And I think even Filecoin that just got released on like Coinbase, I think it was. There's a lot of others that are doing the same concept but we still haven't seen it operationalized. We still haven't seen it consumerized to where we're all using it in favor of that versus a Dropbox or an AWS or something like that. So kudos to them. I think that's the right way to go. Is it innovative and something we've never seen before? No, but no big deal. I'm, I'm glad to see them doing some things around the Pi Node itself. There's also a video by one of the developers of the Pi Node just talking about its future and got a little technical in some things like the containerization and Docker and some other things. So if that's not your cup of tea, don't worry about it. Don't don't concern yourself too much. I'm just glad to see them producing some leadership content and some vision of where Pi is going, because I will tell you for me as a maybe a critic in both the good and the bad of Pi, I was itching to see that I needed to see them lead from the front. So Pi team has done that. That is a really good Thing. So where am I with Pi? And just conclusion, I still like it. I, I'm still all in it. You can see my my group is growing. I'm at what 16 out of 31 members here. I'm not going to open it because I don't want to have to blur out and accidentally dox people. But I'm growing. Look, I'm at almost 3,000 Pi now. That's awesome. I mean, if this works out, great. We still don't know what Pi is going to be worth. We still don't have a wallet. We still don't have an ecosystem we can trade. There's no true value to Pi yet, and that's okay. It doesn't bother me. I like the potential and I'm still in it for the potential of where this is going to go. So I'm still a daily miner. I'm still covering it. And I love that you guys are watching these videos. I love that you care. I love that you are diving in and want to know more. So I'm here for you as a resource. If you've got questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'm starting to see a number of questions all kind of consolidate together. So I'll probably be producing a video of some of the common questions that I get asked in the comments that we don't have to scroll through. YouTube is really terrible about that, I realize. Uh, but definitely leave me a comment down below if you have questions for me. Hey, I hope you liked this video and I hope the October update was valuable for you. I hope it gave you some feedback and insight into where I think Pi is going. I'd say a lot of positives so far. There's still a lot of hurdles for them, but I like where they're going. I like the potential. I hope this video was a fun watch for you. Now, the last thing I will say, going back to the beginning of the video, the one thing you can do for me is just hit the like and subscribe buttons. Hit that, I'm growing my subscriber count. It is growing by leaps and bounds all the time. I would love to see you in my community. It's the best way to stay in touch with me. It's just one little click. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Leave me your comments down below. And until next time, I will see you later.